Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Infinity and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. So I'm going to be doing a reading and energy update today and there's been a lot of energy swirling in the air. There really is so much to talk about and in fact, so many different points of focus to address in the quantum field. So for someone I'm tuning into here, actually an initial starting message might be that maybe you are feeling pulled in a lot of different directions or a little bit scattered mentally or emotionally. I'm also noticing just as we're kind of giving a little overview of some of the energies here before we dive deeper, I've noticed this longing sensation almost like a deep sense of grief, but it seems to come with a pulling sensation. So this is really difficult to describe in words as so often these energetic experiences are because they're so deep and raw and often happening at this really high level energetically. So it can be difficult to find the words to describe some of these things. And I know many of you are familiar with that because you yourself are so psychic, you are so intuitive, you have such a strong connection to the divine within yourself and of course whatever you consider to be the cosmic forces guiding your life in some external sense. So you are one who is familiar with this sensation of not always being able to put your spiritual experiences into words that others can understand. Maybe that's coming up here because for someone listening, maybe that's occurred recently with certain people in your life where you feel a little bit more quiet than usual or around certain groups of people or maybe with specific individuals in your life, you're just feeling as though it's difficult to find the words to really discuss, describe, or explain how you're feeling on that deeper spiritual level or what you're going through. Because I'm definitely picking up on someone who is going through something very much alone, where you are alone with yourself processing something or dealing with something. I'm hearing tossing and turning. So you might even be tossing and turning at night by yourself as you are dealing with some of this or processing some of this. I'm also getting very much a back and forth energy. I don't want to say it's indecisive, but it's this sense of, again, feeling pulled in many different directions. And I'm hearing you feel pulled to a lot of potential timelines, but not every potential timeline you can sense into is ready to receive you. Now, this is getting very quantum right away, which of course, and I just saw 333 on the recording timer. Since all of these readings are co-creations, meaning you bring your energy to the reading regardless of when or where you're tuning in, and that energy actively co-manifests the messages that come through, but I'm getting that right away. Some of you are manifesting through these more quantum, higher level messages around how the reason you're feeling pulled in so many different directions is because... There are many different timelines and potentials pulling on you at this time. But the thing is, not all of those timelines are actually available and accessible to you right in this now moment. So what does this look like when you're someone who is as you are, highly psychic, highly intuitive, meaning amongst, of course, many other things that come along with being as psychic as you are. One thing that is a byproduct of this is that you are able to read into your potential timelines and even more specifically, when it comes to certain individuals in your life, you can actually read into your potential timeline with that person. So this is why 
sometimes you will meet or connect with a person and you can barely know them, but you almost instantly know that this person is not going to play a very major role in your life, that their role in your life is going to be relatively on the surface or temporary. However, with other individuals, you can meet someone or even just see someone from across the room And you can read the energy of your potential timeline with that person. Now, of course, you might be doing this subconsciously. This might not necessarily be happening at the conscious level, but you can read the energy of that shared timeline with them. And you can see that that connection holds a lot of potential, a lot of potential depth, a lot of potential meaningful futuristic moments and connection points. But what's so difficult for us to understand when we are someone who is, again, so deeply in touch with our own soul, with our intuition, with our psychic abilities, but also here having this concrete physical human experience, one thing that we are in the process of learning is that just because we can sense a potential timeline with a person doesn't mean that in the now moment, that connection is able to be experienced on that timeline, that that person is open to experiencing the connection on that timeline in that moment. Not to say it won't ever happen out into the future or that timeline won't ever play itself out, but very often we can find ourselves in situations where we are living on potential when it comes to our connections. And yes, we may have had the tendency in the past to gaslight ourselves and to think, why am I living on potential here? Why am I so tied to this person or this situation or this idea? And people around us may tell us, why can't you just let it go or let that person go or whatever it is? It's not because you are crazy. It's because you are intuitive. It's because you can sense the potential timeline with that person or with that opportunity or thing or idea. But we're also learning how to balance the human aspect of our life experience and our nature to live a more fulfilling, balanced, happy, supported life. And this involves, of course, being able to see the situation from the physical perspective in the now moment as much as we're able to psychically read into the futuristic potentials of that connection It's a kind of groundedness that we're being brought into, groundedness through being able to acknowledge what something is for what it is in the physical, in the now, how it's showing up for us and supporting us, or how it isn't in the now physical reality in a concrete way, rather than continuing to sacrifice our time, energy, and emotion for something that is leaving us feeling ungrounded and unsupported in the physical realm. So somehow, I know a lot of this might seem pretty random, but I also don't really believe that anything is entirely random. Everything is according to a sort of divine order, and I feel If you've reached this video or this video has found you in some way and you've listened this far and felt some kind of resonance, more than likely something here was meant to reach you and it connects with you in some kind of a personal way. So of course, I would love to hear from you in the comments under the video if something here is connecting so far. I also like to let you know that when you subscribe to the channel, this is really powerful because it's a form of virtual energetic transference. So when you do subscribe as a subscriber here, I'm able to pick up on your energy more easily and effectively, not just in this specific reading video, but in future reading videos as well. Okay, so I'm going to be shuffling the cards here, and I want to say that this longing kind of grieving feeling might actually be related for some of you to what we've been talking about here, to this sense of having lived for the potential of something or someone, and now it's almost like you're grieving it for what it is currently in the physical 
and you're allowing yourself to be supported. You're allowing yourself to experience life in a more full-blown way, to experience the love that you deserve, the adoration that you deserve, the support that you deserve. And in doing so, You are creating space with something or someone that hasn't been showing up for you in that way, at least for a temporary period of time. Because something that my guides keep emphasizing is you have to do what is best for you now. And in a sense, not necessarily, of course, it's not that you're closing off your psychic ability to read into the future of something. That's not quite the right way to put it, but it's almost like you are allowing the now to take priority. You are showing up for yourself now. You are doing what is best for you now. You are making the next best choice that you can make for yourself, for your relationships, for your life in the now moment, rather than trying to predict and play out every intuitive futuristic timeline with the people and things in your life. Because as you continue to choose what is best for you now, the future will continue to unfold itself in perfect harmony with that higher energy that you are activating and accessing now by making that highest choice for yourself and keeping yourself in alignment with that energy. So it's almost like this idea of surrendering the futuristic outcomes, surrendering the potential timelines, because I'm almost seeing someone just tossing and turning, playing out potential futures, either with a person or in their life generally. I'm also hearing you are on your own timing. You are on your own timeline. And that timeline isn't going to look like anyone else's because it's not meant to, because you are meant to be showing the world an unconventional way of living life, of doing life, of doing love, maybe or if it's not love, it could be career, business. You are going about life in this unconventional way that at times you may question because it is so unconventional, but it's meant to be. This is the path that's been calling you, that's been speaking to you your entire life. And I guarantee if this is resonating for you, you can look back on your life and you can see that. Every step you've taken in life, you've felt this voice within you calling you to the unconventionality that you are now having the courage to embody and to live. So here we have the page of swords in the upright position, and this is sitting on the throat chakra, and there's this word curiosity coming out here, this is very interesting. It's almost like you are allowing your curiosity to guide you in exploring something related to your throat chakra. This might be communicating with a new person or a new group of people. This could be internally using your throat chakra energy in a new way, opening your throat chakra in a new way to share your voice or your message, your story, your truth with the world. But there is this lightness to it. There is this feeling of you allowing curiosity and wonder to guide you in however you are connecting with or expressing this throat chakra energy again, whether it's communicating with another person or just communicating yourself in a new way. I'm also hearing something about exploring with how you are presenting yourself or communicating yourself to the world. And I'm getting something about appearance. So for someone listening here, you might be kind of experimenting with your hair, your clothing, your maybe how you nourish or move your body, how you speak. I'm not sure what this is, but it almost feels like exploring with how you are choosing to present yourself to the world. That won't be for everyone. That felt like a bit more of a specific message for someone. What else can I channel here? And 
By the way, this is connecting with the root chakra. It's almost connecting the throat to the root chakra. So it's connecting your expression of yourself to a more grounding energy, like the way that you are allowing your curiosity to guide you here and exploring communicating or presenting yourself to the world in a new way, it's somehow really grounding you. It's really stabilizing you. Now here we have the empress in the reverse position. So someone here may be feeling a bit lost, feeling as though they aren't growing in the way that they would like to be either generally or in some area of their life. Maybe you felt as though you've gotten a bit disconnected from your usual rhythm or your typical flow state. This won't be for everyone. I usually say this at the beginning, but of course, throughout all of my reading videos, always use your intuition and only take the messages that resonate and connect for you in a personal way. Now, I just keep getting this feeling of tension coming up and, you know, the feeling that's coming up, it's someone who, this is almost very specific, but it's like someone who will express concern for you or make a comment about you, whether it's about, it's like someone that would say, oh, you look tired or you seem kind of low energy, or it seems like something's been off lately, or it's like someone who is feigning to express empathy or sympathy or compassion towards you or concern about you, but it has a really, really weird energy to it. And you're very empathic. So you can sense when someone's intentions don't line up with what they say. And I'm hearing trust the energy and don't gaslight yourself out of what you're feeling from someone energetically, because I'm getting some interesting sort of message that almost sounds like a kind of old adage, adage or a kind of cliche, but I don't know if it actually is some sort of saying, but it's about how it's like a kind word can be like poison for you energetically. So it's almost like if you don't hold strong boundaries with these individuals that come at you with what appears to be expressing concern or sympathy or compassion, but you can feel this offness to it. If you deny yourself your own boundaries or kind of gaslight yourself out of that, you can actually be a little bit negatively affected by that energy or by that connection with that person. Yeah, I'm just, I, just, I just keep hearing. It's funny. I stumbled over my words there. And that's almost like what this person does to you. It's like whatever they say to you, it like worms its way into your mind and latches on and causes this distortion or like this disruption in your energy. But that's actually the saying I was thinking of. It's the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It's almost like someone feigning that they have good intentions here, but they're actually having this negative impact on you in some sense, or they're creating this distortion in your energy field. And you may even be trying to convince yourself to ignore that distortion or to kind of convince yourself out of it. But I feel this message here for someone of allowing yourself to allowing yourself to acknowledge how intuitive you are, the correctness, to acknowledge the correctness of your intuition, because I'm sure you can look back even on recent experiences and see how there were these times where you just knew something intuitively or you knew something was off about someone and then it came out that you were correct. And there is this message coming through about, I'm hearing not needing to play out every timeline. So it's almost like someone here maybe is trying to create a timeline with you and you're being called to use your discernment and to realize you can trust your intuition when you can kind of feel as though something is off about a person or like you can kind of see or sense where things are going and you don't have to force yourself to play out timelines with others in connections just because they want to open that portal with you or they want to open that timeline with you. 
I'm hearing something about missing a window as well. So for someone listening here, there actually could be someone trying to worm their way back into your life. Once again, we're getting that kind of worm metaphor here, but trying to worm their way back into your life after missing a window of opportunity or being disconnected from you in some way. Yeah, this is someone trying to communicate with you. This may be someone who seemed a bit insensitive towards your feelings in the past. And this does seem to be someone, maybe this is the person who's the empress reversed. Maybe this isn't even you or you're artificially picking up on their energy, but really this is their original energy that they are feeling like they're insecure or not growing enough in their own life. And that's making them want to communicate with you, but this feels like someone who's putting something on. With the sun card reverse, they're feeling, yeah, they're feeling like this lack of excitement for their life. They're feeling very stunted, maybe even overwhelmed, but they're coming at you as though it's almost like they're coming at you in a very opposite energy. Yeah, the Ten of Wands upright, you can feel a kind of heaviness here with this person, which may be why you've decided not to open some kind of timeline with them. But they've been very forceful with the Chariot Reverse, whether they're actually actively trying to like push their way into your life or whether this forcefulness is more subconscious. I feel like this person is just like really, really desiring to connect with you. You're feeling very resistant to it, but maybe you're not entirely sure why. You might be asking yourself, why am I feeling so resistant to connecting with this person? It's because you can sense an energy from them that they're not necessarily being forthright about. Yeah, this is someone feeling very restricted and limited in their own life. They feel like they're drifting through life, lacking direction with the hanged man. Maybe they chose a direction that they're really, really unsure about or really wishing that they didn't choose. But again, I feel all of this is extremely hidden because what they're trying to show you is the six of wands. So it's like on the surface, they're trying to come off as very successful, as though their life is going extremely well, as though they're thriving, but you're able to sense all of this heavy, lower vibrational energy beneath the surface. I'm actually picking up as well that you are someone who is deeply empathetic and you really value authenticity from others because what drains your energy is constantly trying to fill the gap mentally and psychically between how someone is presenting and what they're really feeling or thinking beneath the surface. This is why inauthentic people drain you because when you're someone who's incredibly psychic and intuitive and you're connecting with someone who's coming off one way on the surface or trying to present one way, when in actuality they are feeling or thinking very differently beneath the surface, consciously you might not be able to pinpoint exactly what those differences are, but subconsciously you will find that you are draining your energy because it's almost like everything that person says or does, you're constantly trying to connect the dots to fill in the gaps between what they're really thinking and feeling and what they're showing to you. This is also why authentic people are so life-giving and so energy-giving to you on the other end of that equation. And very often you can tell how authentic someone is that you're connecting with because if you feel extremely drained almost instantly, not even after the interaction, but sometimes during it, I'm seeing a penguin for some reason. But if you feel extremely drained during that interaction, this can actually be a sign that that person is being inauthentic. Now, of course, when I say inauthentic, this doesn't necessarily have to be malicious. Many people are subconsciously inauthentic. They're not even trying to manipulate or to appear different on the surface. It's that they haven't yet fully connected with their own authentic self, or they're afraid of their authentic self being revealed to the world or being revealed to you. And so they might hide or mask it in little ways 
especially when you're initially getting to know them. But I'm picking up that when you're around people who know who they are, who are confident in who they are, and to express that openly and authentically, often these people really give us energy or they don't drain our energy in the same way because we don't have to be constantly expending energy trying to figure out, okay, well, this person said this, but something about that felt extremely off. And what I'm actually feeling is this. So yeah, I'm getting with this person, like you're feeling a heaviness around the situation or a drain around it, but that's because you can sense intuitively that they are not being open about a lot of what's going on in their life. A lot of the ways in which they're feeling trapped, overwhelmed, unhappy with their progress, but trying to present something completely different. Now here we have the seven of cups in the upright position. This is about having many different options or possibilities. Now, maybe this is connecting with all of those timelines that you might feel pulling on you at this time, which by the way, as you become more clear energetically, as you clear your energy more, and as you express that energy more in a conscious way, whether that's through something you're doing completely alone with yourself or something you are actively sharing with the world, it doesn't matter because everything is felt and heard in the quantum realm, whether you're alone or around others physically. So whatever you've been doing in this way, it's caused your energy to radiate a stronger signal in the quantum field. And because of this, you have to understand that you're going to open up more options, more opportunities, more potential connections in a positive sense for yourself. You're going to become more positively magnetic. But this also means that at times you can feel many different people and energies pulling on you because so many different people and entities and groups are sensing this shift within you. And so just like a magnet will attract things to it that are essentially worthless and also things of great value, as you become more magnetic, you have to become more discerning about whether what you're attracting in is really a value to you or not. I'm hearing with greater magnetism comes stronger boundaries. So that may be a message for someone as well. And I see that because of this greater magnetism and this call to stronger boundaries, you're shifting from the queen of cups reversed to the queen of swords. You're shifting from someone who may have in the past overly sacrificed yourself, your own wants, needs, or desires, your own emotions for other people to becoming one who's extremely keen and discerning with the queen of swords in the upright position, one who wields a great deal of power, but also isn't afraid to cut out people from their life who are essentially draining their energy. Once again, I'm getting that messaging about listening to whether you're feeling fueled or drained by certain people in your life. Okay, here we have the nine of cups reversed and the nine of pentacles. The number nine might be significant to someone, but I also see this number as being right on the brink of something because of course the 10 in the traditional tarot often represents this kind of total fulfillment. It's like a coming full circle moment. So I see you, yes, really thriving here in a very visible way, being very independent here in a high vibrational energy with that nine of pentacles. But there's also that sense of you being right on the brink of completing something, completing a cycle, completing a project, bringing something into its fullest fulfillment, into that next level, so to speak. And I see that as you're in that place, you have a lot of people observing you who have left their dreams in the past or who feel as though they failed at their own dreams in life or have given up their dreams in life with the nine of cups reversed. And so as we talk about this magnetism and discernment, I'm seeing that there is this level of caution that needs to be exercised when you're attracting in specifically 
the attention of individuals who may feel as though they've left certain dreams in the past. You may even notice this consciously that you are meeting or connecting with certain people who it's almost like you trigger this inner child within them. You might even notice when you're talking to them that their eyes start to light up or they start talking about their childhood or childhood dreams that they had. It's like you have this ability of touching someone in such a way that causes them to get this feeling of nostalgia and it takes them back to earlier times in their life when they still had these dreams and goals and visions and this lighter, more playful, more open way of approaching their life. So you can inspire this out of others, which is a true gift to those who have the privilege of encountering you. But the thing is, there also will be those who choose to reject that inspiration from your energy, but instead kind of wallow in this feeling of lack of fulfillment or failure or feeling like they've lost something in their life. And the individuals who reject the inspiration and kind of wallow in that lower space may actually project onto you in the form of jealousy or even criticism, criticizing what you're doing, nitpicking at what you're doing or at little things about you. This even could be some of those who feign this concern for you. It's like they're looking for something about you to criticize or to act concerned about. It's a way for them to elevate themselves in some sense above you, at least in their own mind, if they're rejecting the inspiration that they could be receiving from you. So I'm not sure why that message is coming out here. Maybe that's just something that's been on someone's mind consciously or subconsciously. And I hope that provided some clarity for you. Now, I will be closing out this first YouTube reading and actually continuing this reading on Patreon. I'm really excited specifically for this Patreon reading because I feel it's almost like we have multiple specific people waiting in the wings to deliver some kind of message to you who are connected to you energetically, either romantically or platonically. You may already know intuitively who some of those individuals are. They may have popped into your mind, even as I said that, but we will be looking into those who may be wanting to say something to you, to connect with you, who might be thinking about you at this time. We'll also be channeling into any additional details or messages or pieces of information that want to come through specifically for those of you who are inspired to join on Patreon. So if you do feel guided to join our Patreon Soul Tribe, the link to do so is in the pinned comment and description box underneath this video. Otherwise, I am going to close this first reading with a Rumi Oracle card. And the Rumi card here is the human gift. So let's go ahead and read a guidebook message here. Okay, and the guidebook says, Oh heart, what is your excuse for all these blunders? Such loyalty is offered by the beloved, yet so much treason comes from you. Such kindness is offered by the beloved, yet so much defiance and resistance comes from you. Such grace is offered by the beloved, yet so much fault and failure comes from you. Such attraction is offered by the beloved with sweetness and generosity, yet such jealousy comes from you with so much doubt and suspicion. Rumi. And the guidebook also says, Sacred sight is what is behind this oracle for you now. You are meant to be witnessing something important, something that will make the presence of the divine in your affairs more real to you. So now, take comfort in this oracle. Surrender is placing responsibility where it is best placed, firmly in the hands of that part of you wise enough to know the great beloved is wiser still, and that your life unfolds according to the great beloved's grace. This oracle comes with special guidance for you. You are or soon will be seeing with greater clarity and insight a situation which has been obscured to you in the past. See what is truthfully there. Be in the compassionate nature of your heart, and you shall also be shown the most graceful way to become clear and free of the darkness, either within yourself or within others and the world around you. 
So that feels like a beautiful place to close this reading. If my energy does resonate with you in a general sense, then I would love for you to subscribe to the channel, join our beautiful community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram at magnetize yourself. And of course, the link to the extended version of this reading where we will be heading to next is underneath the video. Otherwise, I am sending you all huge amounts of love and light energy. Have an amazing remainder of your day and week, and I will connect with you here again in Friday's reading.